Hello! Welcome to Quail's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy. And I'm Janet. It's a beautiful, sunny February day. 50 degrees out there. It feels like spring. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's February 8th, <laughs> so it's quite unusual. It's really nice outside. We're taking it. <laughs> That's right. That's I right. couldn't wear a sweater today, though. I have a sweater, but... It reminds me, actually, it was... I forget how many years ago now. It's been a while. We moved Amy, my daughter, from one apartment to another in a, in February, and it was 72 degrees that day. Oh, wow. It was really bizarre, and everybody was out because the, it was so nice that day. Mm -hmm. There were people everywhere, and it was just madness moving her from one apartment to the other in Philadelphia. <laughs> But that's what it reminds me of. It's so nice out, yeah. It is. And we're going to have a couple days like this, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Before we get a little rain and then it cools off for the weekend again. But next week is still warm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yep. <laughs> Are we going to get any snow this winter? We haven't had any snow in our area. <laughs> I'm we had, certainly not complaining. We had a <laughs> dusting at my house. I live up more on a hill than Janet does, and we, had, we did mm -hmm. have a dusting. But we just had a grass cover. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I think I, th I said winter. to my husband, the beginning of March, we're probably going to have a snowstorm. Maybe. I mean, I Some thought we would. in March, we, get, we do get snow. <laughs> I thought we'd have one by now, but oh, oh well. well. <laughs> <laughs> winter is going quickly, so I'm happy. Mm. The other day, it was full moon, and I was reading mm. it was the snow moon. I never knew this before. Okay. And it said that's the midpoint between winter and spring. Oh, Okay. Isn't that great? We're past the midpoint. That's right. And it said that things are actually starting to grow and move around underground well, after you, the snow moon. Isn't that? You I can I see the that. that apples are coming up. Yeah, there's yeah. some buds around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my neighbor's magnolia tree has buds on it. I saw that mm. today. You know what's going to happen. <laughs> They're going to start blooming and then it's going to yeah. freeze. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, well. It's still knitting weather. It is. Well, for me, it's 12 months out of the year. Well, that's but... <laughs> true. <laughs> I think most people take a little break in the summer. Yes, yes. And even I slow down in the summer, but... And do socks. Yeah. Something small. Small things. Speaking of socks... Yeah. We, we could go into have... socks well, before we is, do our finished or this wearing. Is a, uh, for me, it's a work in progress, but for you, yours are finished. Yes, these are my basic pattern that I make up. It's a three by one rib. First of all, it's a one by one rib. One by one. In the top part here for about 16 rows. And then I did three by one rib. Oh. I do like that. I see. And this is one of my Rhinebeck yarns. I've really been using my Rhinebeck yarns. They're not sitting too long this time. Um, into the World, W uh, H I R L E D, Into the World. And it is Captain Tight Pants. <laughs> Joy has to remind me of the yeah. name because she also made them at one point. Yeah. But they're so soft. I just love mm -hmm. this yarn. I'm going to love wearing nice. these. I haven't worn them yet. I've been waiting to show them. And my pair has, I've had mine a few years and they're holding up nicely. Yeah. yeah. So that's what it's you said. Yarn. So, mm -hmm. ah, they just feel great. Can't wait. Pacoke. Pacoke. Chu sock, I think is the base. Pacochu, something oh, like that. Know. Yeah, it's the name of the base. Okay. And then Captain Taipans is the colorway. Right. Mine is, it's Integrity Sock by Virtuous Yarn Company. Oh, I do yes. have a label here. Oh, here, yes. hold this and I'll yes. pull out my label. This is the, the yarn that I, I bought this. when I was in uh, State College earlier this year. This is really pretty. I love the striping. Yeah, me too. And when it was in the ball, I had no idea that it was even going to stripe. But when it came out, obviously it is. Here's the back. It's called Integrity Sock. It feels good. She doesn't... Oh, yeah. The colorways... Animal lover. Animal lover. Uh, animal lover. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why she would say animal lover, but anyway. Yeah, I don't know. It's blue it's and... It's not like leopard It's like or blue and... Yeah. yeah. Whatever. But whatever. What's, what's the heel? I see it as the, something different. Yes. The heel is a short row heel. And I used Arna and Carlos's short row uh -huh. method for doing the heel. 
because I wanted, I didn't want to disrupt mm -hmm. the striping yeah. as it came down. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. Yeah. So that, those are our socks for the day. Well, you have another pair coming, right? Well, just in progress, but um, maybe we should talk about what we're wearing because <laughs> I think I might be taking it off. Oh, okay. <laughs> a little bit warm. All right, tell us about this. You want me to do it first? Yes. Okay. <laughs> This is my half and half triangles wrap that I made for Ryan Beck for 2021. And I did a meet and greet with the Caddy Jacks people. They did a knit along. I'll take it off. It's the um, free pattern from Pearl Soho. Half and half triangles wrap. I know there's thousands made. Mm -hmm. My pen is stuck, so I'll just take it off like this. It's very glittery. Half of it is the glitter yarn. It's Misha's Obsessions. I'll get the right side. It's huge, of course. <laughs> Misha's Obsession. <laughs> this is the one that everybody did in Lid and Quill from Pearl Soho. And you do three skeins of each color, but I use Stash. And it's two half triangles. My one is the plain charcoal gray. I know I've shown this before. And the other one is this pretty sparkly and it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's so soft. It is really it soft. It really is spongy. Yeah. It's such an, I, Misha's yarn is really nice. Mm. Oh, and the charcoal has little flecks of that color in it. So yeah. that's why I combine these two. I, I take this along um, on car rides and so forth and have it around my neck. I just, it's so comfortable. It doesn't itch. It's just perfectly comfortable light. And it lays nicely too, even without the pin. And I'm wearing my Delft sweater. It's by Carrie Hestness. She is a Norwegian designer, I think. Mm -hmm. I used Juniper Moon Patagonia. So this is the yarn. This colorway is called Juniper. Hmm. So this is the dark green, it's called Juniper. It looks really different mixed with the other colors. It does, doesn't it? Wow. It, I wouldn't even say that was the yarn you used for that. To me, really in, the, in the skein, this looks real green and almost foresty, mm -hmm. juniper. But knit up like this, I it's feel blue. like it... Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's it definitely looks, blue. It That's why I said. It It's, it's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> It's beautiful. Whatever and when I was looking for a shirt to go with it, I was a little stumped because I don't really have anything that's just mm -hmm. that matches the shade mm -hmm. really well. So I went with a, a yellow that kind of goes with the gold. This is my first time using this yarn. Mm -hmm. It is lovely. It's merino. It's very soft. And people were complaining on Ravelry. They felt like it wasn't real good for color work. But oh, I you're think kidding. I think it was it worked and great. And that's Juniper Moon what? Patagonia. Patagonia. Okay. Feels nice. Mm -hmm. Humanely grown in Argentina. Organic Marino. It's very nice. Where did you buy this? I got this at Pearls of Pearls Wisdom. Wisdom. Yep. yep. Very nice. Over a couple of years, actually, I bought a few skeins one year think, and then yes, I remember a few skeins. You, yes. I added to my stash a that's couple right. of years later. That's right. So it's possible I may have even mixed in uh, dye lots, but I don't think you oh, can you, tell. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah. I don't think so. Not at all. So let me stand up. You can see mm -hmm. the pattern has rolled edges everywhere, but I put in ribbing everywhere instead of the rolled edges because I didn't like So the roll, you mean the stockinette that rolls mm -hmm. on itself? Oh, mm -hmm. okay. And I did the call. I ripped out the collar three times. Nice. <laughs> it wasn't laying right. I had too many stitches, um, and it was it was like it was it was just not. Mm -hmm. So I I redid it like, I think I ripped it out three times. So I knit it four times altogether, and but now I'm 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 happy with the collar. It's I really nice. like how it how it's. It's almost made. a little squared off. A little it's bit that round. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that really. the same pattern as your nightshirt sweater, that diamond? It's similar. Okay, that's what it reminds the me. The nightshirt has large diamonds with stars in the in the center oh, of okay. the diamonds, mm -hmm. whereas this is just plain diamonds. Mm -hmm. it's pretty. And the one thing I have to say about that I was disappointed with the yarn is that when I knit this, the diamonds were popping like really. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
the texture was there, but then after I washed it and blocked it, it really reseeded. Mm -hmm. And you can't, I mean, you can see that they're there. You can see the texture, but it's not popping like it was before. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that I would use this, for example, in a Gansey. Mm -hmm. Because you would lose right. all that. Yes, all that work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't stand out enough. Right. But I think it's perfect for the color work. Yep. I like mm -hmm. it. Very nice. I'm very happy with it. And what it. did you do with your sleeves? Something looks different there. The pattern does not have any break. Okay. Where you do the increases for the sleeves. So it just kind of mushes together. But I wanted to have a definitive place where I could do my sleeve shaping. Mm -hmm. So I added a solid stitch at the, at the beginning and mm -hmm. the end of the round. Mm -hmm. And then after I did my sleeves, I kind of felt like that was too much, two, having two rows together. Okay. So on the body, I only did, did one. I only did one stitch. Mm -hmm. And I feel I like this better. That one does look I, good. I wish I had done that on the sleeves, but that ship well, has sailed. No, it's so, fine. <laughs> so I did my, my body shaping uh on one stitch and then my sleeves are two stitches of the mm -hmm. dark color great looks beautiful you did that so quickly again of well course. it took six weeks start <laughs> to finish seem like it. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it seems like you're popping out these sweaters once a month i don't know well this will be my last sweater for a while I oh have, is it i have other things i'm gonna be working on oh okay so but i do have another sweater kind of percolating in my okay. brain before summer or? maybe maybe yeah I have a yellow yarn that I bought from Spencer she used to vend at the knitter stay out mm. Spencer Hill and mm. I have a yellow yarn that I bought from her at the beginning of the COVID lockdown and I want to do something with that and I made that may, is probably going to be my next sweater so since it's a nice Pale. Well, I don't know how pale it is, but it's definitely yellow. It's more of a springy, summery color. Mm -hmm. So I may work on it this spring and see if I can use it mm -hmm. late spring and maybe mm -hmm. even to, into summer a little bit. It's a sport weight, so it's light too, which this is too. This is also sport weight. This is lighter than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be more of a DK, but it's not. It's, it's very light. Uh, and your gauge? Well, it's 382 yards. Yeah. It's like a light DK or maybe a heavy sport, but it's for me, it definitely knit up more. Well, for the stranded part, I got seven stitches to the inch. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Just a little Sophie oh, scarf. You that. This is something that I've been seeing on every podcast, everywhere. It's one of the most popular patterns, I guess. Caddy Jacks had a knit along ascot, ascot, this or something. Oh, they did a knit along for this? Yeah. What did they call it? Ask, ascot this or something. They were calling it an ascot. Uh -huh. But anyway, I made the large. This is the large. <laughs> and let me just show you. See, I can wear this. All these people are wrapping it twice around their necks. Exactly. <laughs> it's not happening so for this you. So is, this is the picture. This is the pattern. The Sophie scarf. And I really don't know why mine came out like this. So how it's I use the well not the recommended yarn but the weight it says it's supposed to be forty inches tip to tip. Did and you it's longer. It? Oh yeah, it's longer. Really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> That's why I don't understand this, huh? So what I did, my modification was well I made the larger size, and I went up to thirty five stitches instead of I think it's at thirty three. Yeah, the large size. Yeah. You increase up to 33 stitches. You start at this point, I should say that. There's I-cord edging on both sides. And you start at one tip and just keep increasing every so many rows. And then when you get to the certain point, which they say for the smallest 28 stitches, for the large it's 33. I went up to 35. But then what I also did is I did 18 rows even. Okay. Increasing. Uh huh. Okay. They don't do any. It just increases and then decreases. So then, after that, I'd start at my decreases, 
And that's what I ended up with. I do. I like it like this, though. Uh huh. This is a good. It's cute. This is a good size. The yarn is Toad Hollow, which these ladies are no longer dying, but they do have some yarn left on their website, and it's Toad DK, a hundred percent superwash merino. This is the, what I have left over from the ball. I love the colors. It, the color is where the crawdads sing. So it's, there's gr like charcoal gray, a pale gray, a pale peach, a little bit darker peach and off white. And I love the way the yarn feels. I really like their yarn. Mm. So I, oh, I didn't weigh this. I probably used about 200 yards. That's a perfect one skein project. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. So I do like it like this. I don't, I don't think I would like to double wrap it around my neck. I think it would be too much, especially since it is wider in the back. And it just kind of covers your neck just right. I like this. Mm. Very happy with it. I was considering making these with all my one skein DKs for gifts, but I honestly don't know. Everybody would like this. I don't know. All the knitters are going crazy over it, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what my friends will think, but I like it. I think I'll leave it on. Well, probably the knitters like it just because it's a great yeah. one skein oh, project. You know, and it's so much fun to knit. I love making the eye cord edges. Yeah. I love eye cord edges. It's just slip three stitches right. with the yarn in front. Uh -huh. It's fun to do. And you really don't have to. Once once you get started, you don't have to look at your pattern or mm -hmm. any of that business. It's really easy. It's just something nice to pick up. It looks like it'd be good for a beginner also. Right. Yep, absolutely. Easy TV Because it's all knitting. knits, no pearls. Mm -hmm. Finished item. Well, I have my latest Afghan square. This is square number eight. From Oops. Nora's Vintage... <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Nora's Vintage Afghan. Square number eight. I So far, this is my favorite square. Oh, it's beautiful. I, I really like this one. Mm-hmm. This is fun. I like these cables. Mm -hmm. really Some nice. of them I've been modifying because, and I, I don't remember if this is one of them or not, but some of them have these one by one cables and they cable them every single round, which to me is too busy. So I was cabling every other round mm -hmm. to kind of space it out a little bit. And I prefer that. I like the way it looks better. It does. It looks nice. And it, that I've seen that on two maybe even three of these squares so far and I've I've changed them up on every square just because I like that look better but I really like this one so square number eight 12 more to go it's not bad <laughs> you're moving right along and then uh Arne and Carlos are doing a knit along oh you finished in it. February of their set stall hat and this is from the new Modern Daily Knitting Field Guide. It's mm -hmm. number 23, and it's called Glow. So this is one of the four patterns from... I really like that. The, uh, the book. I don't like their colors. I have to say. Yeah, I don't like their colors. I, I'm not a yours, fan of their colors either. Yours looks really so nice. So I used, obviously, leftovers yes. <laughs> from the sweater. Now look at how green this looks. Yeah. it really. When you put that on, I had no idea. That was... Look at that. I can't believe that. It looks so green. Uh huh. It's and beautiful. yet over here it looks blue. Yep. It must be the light green. I think so. Is pulling out the color the... it's next to. Right. Mm hmm. Very. That's. I love that. Now I like that pattern. I wasn't. <laughs> wasn't crazy. About well, it. I, I have it. I have it. If you yes, want. Yes. Um, I think I have it too. Actually. But... Okay. Yeah. So that's very far. nice. I'm not... And that fits you well too. Yeah, it's a good size. Did you follow the pattern exactly? No. <laughs> <laughs> I always have to ask that because I know. <laughs> well, my that's yarn, funny. my yarn is a sport weight, and they're using the Norwegian wool, which is a oh, DK. That, oh, that's right. So I did more stitches. I forget how many stitches I cast on. I think I did a hundred. Oh, so I cast on like a hundred for the ribbing, and then I increased up to hundred and twenty-six on my first round. And then did the body of it on 126 stitches. And what size yeah, needle? That's what I did. Hmm, what size needle did I use? 
I think a, a four. three or four. Mm -hmm. I think three. I did a four. Because mm -hmm. I did the sweater on a three. Maybe it was a three. Because I, really I did the sweater design. on a three, I think. That's pretty. Now yeah. you're keeping that, I hope. Um, probably looks not. great with your sweater. Oh, please <laughs> keep it. It looks so nice with your sweater. I have so many hats. But this well, matches maybe. your sweater. I threw the other ones away. <laughs> That's really nice. Yeah, it is nice. I'm happy with it. So the knit along, if you want to join the knit along, mm -hmm. it's going on all the whole month of February. Mm -hmm. They have sit and knit for a bit with Arna and Carlos every Wednesday, and today was the second one for the knit along, and they are up to. I think they said row 19, which I think is the end of this stranding. So the first week they just, last week they just did the cast on. And then this, this week they did the stranding up to this point. And then next week I think they're going to talk about how to shape the top. What cast on did they use? They always use long tail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I got. And you use that too, right? Yeah, I do. That's what I use too. I do do a ribbed long tail mm -hmm. but yeah I usually use long tail also mm -hmm. so this is called that looks familiar I think I've made that it's called the classic watch cat by Charlene Church and it's from this book hats on oh, oh no okay that fits you so well Here, here's the, the pattern classic watch cat and then her example in the book is which one Oh, here it is. It's this blue one here. But look at the cuff on that one. This, mm -hmm. I did the largest size. Mm -hmm. Is that she, for Jim, maybe? Mm -hmm. That matches yeah. his sweater, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> it's from the same yarn. I recognize yarn. the yarn. Yeah. <laughs> it's from the same yarn. Good. I I used uh, the Fiverr Company yarn mm -hmm. called Oak, mm -hmm. which is 50 wool, 50 alpaca. And it's the same yarn I used for his Franco sweater. Mm-hmm. And he was asking me, do I have any wool hats? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I made this and I did the largest size and it said to knit the ribbing for 12 inches before, oh before you do the crown shaping. So it's, I mean, I, I, it'll probably be a little bit less, <laughs> it'll probably be shorter on him because he has a bigger head, but... Look how wide that ribbing band is. It certainly is. It's huge. Well, but it covers my ears. I was ears. just going to say, it's going to yeah, keep the ears really... warm and the head warm for mm -hmm. sure. The pattern is written for worsted weight, and this is more like Aran weight. Mm -hmm. So I had to adjust the stitch count a little bit, which affected my crown. I don't know if you no, can that tell. That looks good. But I, that my crown good. decreases are not exactly perfect because I had more stitches than, or fewer I'm sure stitches. no one's going to notice that. that. It looks but, great. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the pattern in the book is knit one pearl, one rib, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to do that on this because it would have taken twice as long to knit. I think knit. it looks better, actually, with the knit. <laughs> but I yeah, I like the knit two mm -hmm. pearl, two rib. Mm -hmm. I like the way it turned out, and I'm happy that I chose that option. It's pretty. Well, I do have a sock in progress. I'm actually trying a new cuff pattern, and it's a free Reggie pattern, and I'll spell it. It's B-E-L-V-O-I-R. I guess it's Belvira or something like that. Socks by Regia. It's just a little bit different. It's a Pearl 2, Knit 3, Pearl 2, and then Pearl 7. So it's a little bit different. And I just barely started it. Mm. But I'll show you the yarn. It's actually Cascade Yarns. And it is Heritage Silk Paints. So it's 85 wool, 15 silk. Oh, it's silk, huh? Yeah. Mm. So silk is supposed to be sturdy. Yes. So is. I'm trying it, and I like. I'm continuing with some subdued colors, for <laughs> wear, very wearable socks. Yes. Let me just say that. Yes. So, I just like the way this felt, and I thought I have. I love cat. I don't know. I always like cascade yarns. Mm-hmm. Heritage was always nice. Just yeah. the regular heritage. Yeah. So I just started with a knit two pearl two rib and I just barely started the pattern so that'll be my sock for the month it is very subtle but I mean there's like blue purple yeah. green Every color. there's some brown yeah mm -hmm. neat very pretty I think yeah shade I'm into these colors 
And? Well, I got a book for Christmas called The Sea Silk Shawl. Oh, wow. It's a yarn woman mystery by oh. Brooks Mencher. I've never heard of that one. Well, he, this is a series, and I've read all of the books in the series. Oh, you have? So the first one was called The Yarn Woman, and mm. then there's... Oh, so there's four in the series all together. The Yarn Woman, The Wailing Wood, The Rusalka Wheel, and then this one. Mm -hmm. And I've read all of them. And this one was far and away my favorite. Okay. I really enjoyed this one. There's always some kind of mystery, obviously. It's called The Yarn Woman Mysteries. She inputs to the solving of whatever riddle is happening. So, for example, in the, the Wailing Wood one... They were trying to figure out what happened to a missing person in the woods in the Pacific Northwest, and she ended up figuring out that certain fabrics came from Indian weavings from like 300, 400 years ago or something. Anyway, she's she's all into to yarn and spinning and fibers, and that, so she does that, and she works in conjunction with like police officers or FBI people who are trying to solve some mysteries. This one I just thought was really readable and very good. And there's a twist in this book, which is that you find out who done it in the very first chapter. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the whole hmm. rest of the book is sort of like... Unravels? Before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have one more. Okay. Uh, something I've been, I worked on this month too. I got back to my float shawl by Don Barker. Oh, yeah. With the assigned pooling yarn. So I have made some progress. Yes, you have. Because I think the last time you showed it, it, it was, was only like, little tip. yeah. Yeah, so I've gotten. So the location of the bumps is <laughs> <laughs> so random. Yeah. It's very. And the thing is, with this yarn, it's cozy custom, like cozy color works um, out of New Jersey. It's a hand-dyed superwash merino, fingering weight. And it's specifically dyed for assigned pooling. The colors are in just specific lengths, I guess. Although, I'm finding that the lengths are different because in the pattern... To do this bobbly thing, it tells you to do five stitches. That does not work. <laughs> Doesn't work. Sometimes you have to do six. Sometimes you have to do seven. Mm. Sometimes I probably could do eight, but I do let it extend sometime, like the pinks on the edges here. Oh, I see. So it goes I do into... overrun a little bit yeah. because I don't want it right on the edge. And I don't want such a big bobble. So I've been basically doing the seven stitch pattern mm -hmm. that you, I won't talk about too much because that's her thing <laughs> on her patterns. But I like it. She did come out with a sweater now using this assigned pooling. Yeah. But I don't think I would do that. And I think it, it's just in the yoke. And then the, the bottom is Isn't solid. It? At least the version of it that I saw. Hmm, I thought I saw no, it all over a... something, but I wouldn't do it. I like it on the shawl, but I don't. I wouldn't mm. do a sweater. Actually, I saw her in person at Rhinebeck, and she did have one of her sweaters on, but I think it was a little bit different technique, and I'm not sure what it was. Okay. But they were much bigger. It was something different. It was more like a flower than these are. So maybe that's what the new sweater is. I didn't, I didn't buy the pattern, so I don't know mm. what that technique is, but... It's interesting. It is fun to do. You never know where they're going to pop up. Just late. Look at this section now. I'm all gray. Oh, and so there's like at, a hole in the empty. middle. There's a whole section mm. of just gray, and all my little at designs are at the two ends. <laughs> you know me. I'm not too. <laughs> I kind of like it to be a little more uniform. <laughs> This is kind of very random. I wonder how and that she didn't dies happen anyplace it. else. I, yeah, I don't know. So that it's so random like that. But, and I would, I would like to see if another one. I don't remember that well. I took a picture at Rhinebeck, but I didn't really look. I know it had 
like little holes mm -hmm. around it. But I wonder if mine, it must seem like mine are bigger. You have big And holes. I have tried to, you know, different ways. So if anybody out there has ever done this, if mm -hmm. you want to put any comments for me um, on your experience with this, and just see like how many, or what yarn, if you used a different yarn, and how many stitches it took to do this design, and if you have holes. <laughs> That's the big thing. Fill us in. <laughs> yeah, if anybody else did. I don't know anybody else doing that, so. Yeah. I, I don't know anyone else doing it either. But I had to try it. It just looked interesting. Yeah. And that's about it. That's all I've been doing. Well, the only other thing I'm working on is my next square. So I just finished square eight, which I already showed you, and then square nine, I looked it up, and it's the first square so far that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. So I skipped square nine and I'm now on to square 10, which is kind of similar to the square eight that I just finished. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm really liking this one That's too. That's pretty too, yeah. So this one is coming along. So now I'm gonna have to figure out how to fill in the missing square that I skipped. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna wait on that. I'm, I may leave that till the very end. I'm and sure just, you'll come up with a variation of something. cables or something. Yeah. Now, you've made all brown ones so far. Yes, I have. I'm going to use Are up all... Are on to the... No, I'm going to use up all the brown yarn oh, first and okay. see how many squares I get out of the brown. Okay. And I'll just see. So how many of these have you used already? I, I don't even know. I've... It, I, nice big, this was fun wine. Yes. Let me look tell at, you. Look at this I'm glad skate. I did it at the art shop when I was working there because it would never have fit on my ball winder. So I did them all at the yarn shop. I can do about two, almost two and a half squares out of one of these balls. Okay. And you have about ten of these, don't you? I guess. I In the brown? I didn't so, even. I think so. Well, see, that's why I thought I might be able to eke out the entire afghan in just the brown. But I'm not sure how much I have left. I haven't. Every time I reach into the bag, there's another brown <laughs> ball in there. So, so there's 20 squares? Yeah. I think you should be able to do it. I might. If you're getting two and a half out of one, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you have ten. So you wouldn't put, if so if all the squares are brown, would you do any accent colors or anything when you're sewing together? Or Probably not. you just leave it all brown? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But That's if nice. I run out of the brown, then I might do a couple, you know, a couple in another color and then maybe use that. Because mm -hmm. you have off-white and like a teal, right? Yeah. Because I, I don't know if I'll be putting an edging on it or not. I don't even know if the pattern calls for an mm. edging. Because the, the, really the, the top and the bottom have like an edging, but the side really doesn't. So if this were on one of the edges, mm -hmm. and they're also put together like this and then this. Mm -hmm. So they're at right mm -hmm. angles to each other. So mm -hmm. I feel like there probably is some mm -hmm. sort of edging that goes on the end. Probably going to be a garter like that. Yeah. And you're blocking as you go. I am. You have to. Blocking as I go. Yeah. <laughs> you have to when you do I squares. It's just too... Oh gosh. I wouldn't want to do all of those at the same That's time. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, Knitting Live is this coming weekend, I guess. Do you know anybody who's going? Nope. Besides the podcasters who I watch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not really. And the yarn shop where we went to see Arne and Carlos, Crazy For You, they're going to be at up there mm -hmm. this weekend all right well i hope everybody is knitting and mm -hmm. doing well yes put some comments in for us let us know what you're doing and some feedback about the assigned pooling please yeah if you've had any experience i'd love to know mm -hmm. all right everybody have a good weekend if you're going to vogue enjoy mm. Love yep. to hear comments about that too. sure yeah if you go let us know i'll be watching podcasts next week to see who went to Vogue and what they had to say about it. See what you missed out It'll on. It'll be fun, yeah. I don't know if I'll have FOMO this weekend, but we'll see. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Enjoy.